Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So currently it is June 10th. We are less than five months away from the 2024 presidential election. We're about 100 days out of the first mail-in ballots being sent out in some key states and Joe Biden could not be in a worse political position because he just hit his lowest approval rating yet. His lowest approval rating to date, it's not getting better for him. And this is insane because you have somebody who is going to be up for election, not like two or three years from now where maybe his approval rating could recover, but you talk about the fact that he's been on a downward trajectory. He's barely been above 40% all year. You know, you look at 2022, uh, back during like around the time of the midterms, and his approval rating was not necessarily all that bad. And yeah, he he had a, a low point at the, uh, I guess you would say, at the uh, summer of 2022. He did recover from that, and that is true. But the fact that he's hitting an all-time low before he is up for re-election, because keep in mind, he was not on the ballot in the midterms whatsoever. This is different. He's on the ballot. And what's more uh, incredible is that the presidential approval rating is the number one indicator for an incumbent president's vote share in history. You look at the past approval ratings, Trump 46% approval in 2020, got 47%. In 2012, Obama, he had a 50% approval. His vote share was 51%. In 2004, Bush basically matched his. And technically, you look at uh, Bush and Clinton, you did have a major third party candidate kind of in the way that may have, I guess you would say, eaten into you know their respective approval rating margins. So that could explain why their vote shares were below their approval, but they were not above their approval, which is really what Biden needs to do to win. And then Ronald Reagan, um, he barely got above his vote share. And you can go back all the way you have approval ratings. You look at the presidential approval rating this time in their presidency. Joe Biden is significantly below Donald Trump's and that was when Trump was kind of at a floor. He was polling below Biden by like 11 points. You had the riots and people didn't really vibe with the response. Trump tried to kind of play to both sides, didn't work out too well for him. He's significantly below Obama. He's below George W. Bush by quite a bit. He's way below Bill Clinton. George H. W. Bush, he's basically neck and neck. And that was the, you talk about presidents losing re-election by a decent margin He's kind of the last one, you could say, uh, to lose a re-election by a decent margin. And he saw a big approval drop at the worst possible time. And even Jimmy Carter at this point, their approval ratings are basically neck and neck. I mean, there was less polling back then. It's true, but you want to look at this. It's just absolutely insane. You go back all the way to, you know, some of these other people. Of course, people are going to cling to Truman as the cope, but there were barely any polls, and polls were awful back in the day. They were off by like 10 points. You had the Dewey defeats Truman thing, but it's a different ballgame now. Biden's approval rating is the lowest that it's been, and he's up for re-election in a few months. They are scrambling around. How bad does this really need to get before they even start to continually button mash to try and stop Donald Trump? and then go out there and try to replace him. Now, this is something that we have kind of scoffed at, and it's true that they've spent how much time and money trying to prop up Biden, and that is true. And we also talk about the lack of alternatives, which is also true, but still, you know, when does his approval rating dropping become the, the big risk um, that's just too big to bear. So you kind of have to have him step aside. You kind of have to replace him. And that's the real question. The only way he's going to get replaced is if they put Kamala Harris in his place. They've made that abundantly clear. You know, these boomer theories of, oh, it's going to be Michelle Obama. Why would that exactly help them out? Michelle Obama does not have a past that's been vetted for one. And there's a reason why she did not run in 2020, because they wanted to do anything they could to stop Trump and if they felt as if she was capable of winning and she ever wanted to run, she absolutely would have run. The nomination would have been hers on a silver platter. And she would have, if she was really that strong, she would have been the candidate. And we know that. 
but that was just not the case. I mean, we know that it's not been the case. They were worried about Biden. They had, you know, a trial run, a, a costly trial run of, of uh, Michael Bloomberg that really didn't go anywhere. And then they had to basically make sure that everybody dropped out that could have been taking votes from Biden just so Bernie Sanders would not get the nomination because they knew if he got the nomination, they would lose. So again, you talk about the, you know, Obama year nostalgia. That's gone. That's over. Younger voters would turn to Trump even more because of how she uh, completely destroyed school lunches. It would not end well. It would not end well. But Kamala Harris, trying to replace Kamala Harris with like a Gavin Newsom, they wouldn't allow that because, oh, Kamala Harris, she's the first female vice president. She's also, you know, the first minority vice president as well. So that's kind of, you know, territory that I don't believe they really want to go down either. But they are sending Kamala Harris on like this image reboot tour because they know that she's just super unlikable. According to all the polling, she's arguably worse off than Biden. And I believe we could uh, look at the favorability ratings somehow. They have them on 538 somewhere. And she's underwater by more than Hillary was underwater by. She's one of the most despised political figures in America. Donald Trump's favorable rating, though, you look at Donald Trump's favorable rating, and it's uh, it's not exactly the lowest. You know, 538 low balls it compared to RCP, but still, it's like 42%-ish, which Joe Biden's at 37. And when they ask about Trump's approval uh, in terms of a callback, did you approve of the job he did as president? People, you know, during Trump's presidency would say no. Now, when they ask that question, they're saying yes. So if this is truly going to be a referendum on which presidency do you prefer, Donald Trump is likely going to win. And this is kind of the way it is. Now, replacing Biden would have a lot of drawbacks because if they replace him, it's going to be with the unpopular Kamala Harris, who also maintains all the same ties to the unpopular administration. And it really just wouldn't end too well for them. So they are deploying Harris. I don't know if it's for a trial run. I don't know if they really want to replace Biden. But the truth is, is that you look at the approvals historically. Biden is in an awful spot. There is no justification uh, for why he should be favored other than, oh, people have Trump derangement syndrome. Now, it is true. A lot of people do. It's, it's you know, it's going to be a close election compared to what it should be. And Joe Biden is likely going to outrun his approval rating by, you know, if it doesn't change at all, by a decent you know margin, one could say just because, you know, people don't like Trump. But the people that disapprove of both when they're polled, they're saying Trump. That was not the case in 2020. It was the case in 2016. And Trump had the, you know, advantage there. But it's even more of an advantage now when you consider the fact that Donald Trump was less approved of, or he had a lower favorable rating than Hillary Clinton. Now it's like vice versa. Trump's in like the low to mid 40s, and then Biden is in the 30s, the high 30s. This is like reverse 2016, except Trump has that same level of advantage. And his numbers are in a higher position than they were back then. So you look at it, Trump is in a much better position. The electoral map favors him. Democrats are really just trying to play defense in some states that they might not be able to win, like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, those four states. You look at Arizona, Hispanics, they're in some recent polling approving of Trump's immigration plan they're trying to fearmonger about. It's backfiring. That's going to cost Democrats, one could say Arizona, in and of itself. And then you talk about the Rust Belt states that have been trending to the right recently, especially with Donald Trump on the ballot. Does Biden have the same enthusiasm in eastern Pennsylvania uh, that he had in 2020? I believe the answer is likely no. You'll see some buyer's remorse. You'll see you know a drop-off in turnout from the whole COVID and BLM hysteria crowd from 2020. That's enough to hand Donald Trump the White House. So Joe Biden, it's going to take a miracle of an approval recovery for him to win. Public opinion is really all that matters in terms of elections. Yes, the polls could be wrong, but are they going to be wrong by the margin they need to be wrong by in order for Biden to go out there and win? The answer is probably not. And this speaks volumes because Trump has been hit with everything. They hit him with four indictments, a felony conviction, quote unquote, not like anybody cares at this point. Uh, and they've hit him with everything possible over the past nine years, and he's in a 
better position politically to win than he's ever been in his entire career. You know, the Democrats are really going to have to be frustrated. They're going to resort to button mashing. Trump's gotten inside their heads so much, and he's continuing to be inside their heads so much, and that's definitely going to cloud their judgment. So here's my takeaway. I think the first debate is going to be crucial because if Biden bombs for some reason, loses the momentum, and then the RNC comes around and Trump gets an RNC bump, he could be in an extremely favorable position. Uh, and if that's the case, then maybe they would look into, okay, maybe at this point, Joe, we're going to basically retire you. Maybe Harris would actually stand a chance because it's like, oh, we'll roll the dice. We're probably going to lose anyways. But if Biden does well enough, or at least you know doesn't lose ground from the debate, then they probably will keep him in. So maybe that's why they want the first debate earlier. But I will say incumbent presidents in first debates usually don't perform that well, but we'll see. I'm sure they're going to get Biden on something and he's going to uh, you know, perform better than people expect. So don't overestimate Biden in terms of his debate performance because we know how these things go. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.